Hi all, so I'm doing another 5D painting in chat. The keen eyed people of you will notice it's a different 5D painting. Uh, me and the other one are currently having a possibly permanent timeout. Um, if you've seen my latest um, vlogs in August, you would have seen what's going on. Um, if you check out the vlog for August the 30th, 2018, you'll see what happened. Um, so I'm just going to get on with this one instead, which is a butterfly one. If you saw my unboxing video uh, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago now, um, you would have seen the Ever Moment butterfly um, one. So that's the one I'm working on. So I've already chose the first one to and I'm going to start with the J's here. Um, so I've already got some of the pieces out. So we're just going to get on with it. <sighs> so this one is a very lovely, colourful, bright um, painting. As you can see, it's just beautiful colours in it already. And we've only just started. Um, unlike the last one, which started off with more dark, dreary colours. But would have got into more beautiful colours if I hadn't fallen out with it. Uh, well, let's try putting them straight, shall we? That would be helpful. Um, straight. There we go. So, I've not really done much today. I have had done some filming of the other 5D painting, um, which I'm probably never going to put out. And I'm just going to bin the whole footage. And the two other videos I have that I haven't released yet of that painting because that painting will never see the day of light again. Like the light of day. I said day of light, didn't I? God. It will never see the um, light light of day again. Because um, basically the squares are too small. And so the gems keep butting up against each other and popping off. At first I thought it was me and I thought it was completely user and nothing wrong. But the further I went on the worse it got and I've actually measured it and compared it to this one. And there is a difference. For every 8 centimetres of squares there's actually a whole extra square on my other one. Which is why it's not fitting because they're just... The drills are the same size as these ones so they're too big for that picture. Well, that picture is too small for the drills. Um, so I wasted about 10 hours on that one, thinking the problem was me. And then today I just finally had enough and started doing some measurements and confirmed it's not me. I'm not useless. <laughs> so instead we're working on this beautiful, calm butterfly, which is actually three butterflies. The, you have a big one at the bottom and then a middle one then a small one. Um, so this one is a long piece. It's um, what size is it? It's thirty centimeters by sixty. So thirty this way and sixty that way. Um, so it's an unusual shape for what I usually make, but this picture was just so pretty I couldn't pass it up. So that's what we're doing. Um, so I hope you all have had a really good day and have any of you ever had a 5D painting that's turned out to be um, useless to you? Because that's what my other one is now. I'm going to keep all of the drills and find something else to do with the drills. Um, I do have a blank canvas. I just need to put a pan into that but it's a much smaller canvas, it's a tiny canvas. Um, so I'll still have a very large amount of drills left. Uh, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I might just wait until I can buy a blank really big canvas and come up with a picture. Or it may be that the shop that sold it to me responds to my message and offers a reprint of that picture. In which case I can just start again because I really did like it. It was, it was a custom one, and um, so I really did like it. But obviously, it's no good 
if the um, drills are bigger than the squares on the picture. But, oh well, never mind. That's life. It's not the end of the world, is it? So, I'm just getting on with the next one. I'm not sure when I'll release this one. Um, I'm definitely not going to bother with the other ones that I've got ready. Because uh, I've got one more fully edited and ready to go. And two more ready to be edited. But I'm just going to scrap all that footage now. And put this one up instead. I won't get this one done today because I have to go to the gym. Um, so by the time I get back I will not be feeling up to it. And that's not to say I work hard at the gym because I don't. If anyone's been following my vlogs you'll know that due to severe health problems my ability to do stuff at the gym is severely limited and I have probably the most easiest workout you could possibly imagine. I mean a one year old could do my workout, it's so easy. But for my body it's not easy. And it's actually a problem. Um, so I just have to be really careful what I do. So even though most people are probably laughing at me and, um, if they saw what I do at the gym. I know that I'm doing my very best to stay healthy. Even if um, it's very much slower than everyone else. And that's all that matters, as long as I'm doing what I can do, it doesn't matter what anyone else can do and what anyone else thinks. If someone else thinks that there's no point in me going because I'm doing so little, that's their choice. Um, the little that I do is still a strain on my body. And I do feel the pain and the fatigue after. So I feel just as worn out, in fact I'm worse than most people who go to the gym because they're actually fit, and I'm not. <laughs> But I do like going to the gym, which is weird. I swore from a young age I'd never step at the gym and I wouldn't want a gym. I wouldn't want to be one of these people that worked out and wanted to be all perfect and things. Um, but you know what? <laughs> things change. Back then, I was an incredibly healthy and skinny person. I mean, like, even after two of my kids... I was still a size 6 to 8, UK, US, UK sizes that is, um, and I walked everywhere, I didn't drive, I just walked, um, pushing prams, carrying the shopping, um, I just didn't see the point in doing it, and I lived up a big hill, I mean like so big that it actually took two people to push the prams up. We, we used to go in groups of three, me, my twin sister and one of my cousins. And what we used to do, it's ridiculous, one of us would stay down the bottom with the two remaining prams, because we all had kids, um, while two would push the other one up. And then the other one would come back down, one of them would then come back down when the other one stayed up there with that pram and help push up the other prams. And we take it in turns. And it was the only way to get up this hill because it was just huge. So we'd always take all the heavy stuff on the first pram that was taking two of them to push up. And then all the lighter stuff would go on the two prams that were left to be pushed up the second time round. Uh, it, was, it was a pain in the bum, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, it must have looked ridiculous, people seeing us walking up and down these hills. But seriously, it was hard work. These things are stuck together. There we go. Uh, but, you know, it kept us fit, and that's the important thing. Um, but nowadays, you know, I can't walk in a few metres out of my door, let alone up a really steep hill. I mean, I don't leave the house without crutches because I tend to fall over. I can walk around the house without crutches, so people always assume I'm fine. <laughs> But I'm not. What it is, is this house is strategically laid out so no matter where I stand, I can reach a surface. And so if I have a funny moment and start to fall over, I can support myself on whatever surface it is I'm stood near. So there's cupboards and tables and desks and things, all within easy reach no matter how 
I move in this house. So I don't tend to need my crutches unless I'm having one of the days where my legs are actually giving out on me. Um, which at one point was daily. <laughs> but nowadays is um, luckily only once or twice a week now. So I'm getting much better, which is really nice. And hopefully this gym will help improve that because he wants me to try to do the treadmill without holding on um, and that's a real issue for me because I tend to fall off them otherwise um, so I'm working on doing that even if it's just for short periods of time to start with um, but we'll get there eventually can but try uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to going, even though I know I'm going to be quite tired at the end of it. But I've not got anything on tomorrow, so I can sit and just do this, or do some drawing, or do some knitting or crochet or something, and just rest. And that's the important thing, that I've always got the rest I need at the end of the day. And the next day, and sometimes the day after that. <laughs> and if I overdo myself, maybe a few weeks. Uh, but I shouldn't be overdoing myself at the gym. Um, oh, sorry. That is my medicine alarm telling me I need to go and take my pills. Um, and my asthma pump. So that I can still breathe and live, you know? <laughs> um, so I better go and take that in a minute. But we can wait for just a few minutes. Put that one in the wall. Place. Never mind. I'm doing this checkerboard method, but I keep forgetting where I'm supposed to be going and putting them in the wrong place. That's clever of me, isn't it? Simple process, and I can't even manage that. <laughs> I hope you can see alright. And the sun has gone in, but it's still too bright for my actual, um, what you call it, my lights. So they're useless right now. But that's okay. You should be able to see just fine, I think. So what are you all working on right now? Why don't you let me know down in the comments what you're working on. Um, or if you're happy to show pictures, pop along to my group on Facebook, Sonia Jones YouTube. And show me what you're making and what you're working on. I'd love to see. Um, it doesn't have to be um, diamond painting. It can be any craft you like. Um, including cooking. I, I love seeing people cook. So you can show me any of that as well. Um, there's not many cars and crafts I'm not interested in. So I love seeing them all. I have a random person behind me. <laughs> I have a weirdo behind me. Better known as my youngest son and one of his cuddlies called Hip. Hi now. <laughs> he's just snuck in to say hello. And he's now waving on the head camera if you look up. <laughs> oh. He keeps me entertained. <laughs> if I'm feeling bored I just call him down, he's crazy so he just keep me in to entertained. <laughs> <laughs> would you like a hug? Um, not right now, but what I would love is my med starling because I need to take them. The alarm's gone off. Okay, which ones? My asthma pump and my evening tablets, please. Okay. He's such a good boy. He knows what meds. I just have to tell him what ones they are and he goes and grabs them. Um, they're already um, separated up into the dosages. So he just has to grab the pots. And he looks after me because he's a good boy. Oh, that's him back already, so I'm just going to finish putting these couple of J's in and then I'm going to take my tablets. Right, so leave that there for a second and I will be back in a minute. Back again. Hopefully we are in sync with the cameras. And yeah, so meds all took, I'm all good, ready for the gym. So I'm ready for the gym. I'm not really ready for the gym. I haven't actually got into my gym clothes, but 
Duncan messages when he hits Salisbury and then it usually takes him 15 to 20 minutes minimum to get home from there. Um, so I just have to wait for that message and then I can run upstairs. I say run, what I mean is hobble upstairs and get dressed. Um, not that I've got much to wear for gym clothes because I don't actually fit into my old gym wear which was just a uh, gym leggings and a uh, gym top and that, you know, baggy t-shirt style. But because of recent developments in my health, I'm, I'm actually too fat to pull them now. So I will be wearing normal leggings and a big baggy top. I just have to make sure that I've got socks and shoes and bras and things on, you know how it goes. <laughs> Can't go outside without a bra on, especially to the gym. Well, you could, but I don't think it would be appreciated very much. <laughs> Sorry for any blokes listening who suddenly got a bra talk, but you know, that's life, we're adults. So, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to do tomorrow, other than rest. Um, I will do some kind of crafting. I might do this because I'm loving being in my new craft room, but I really do need to get some crochet done. And to do that, I really need to be in the other room, sat on the sofa, because that's comfier for me to hold all of the project because the Wings of Change blanket is very big now and so needs the support of the sofa so that it doesn't keep falling down on me. Um, it's quite amazing how big it's got but I'm still enjoying it. it it's so pretty. The rows are not boring because each row is different. Um, and I do want to make another one, but first I'm going to make a Mandela Madness, I think. But I'm not allowed to start that until I've finished a few more projects. Um, so once I've finished that blanket, the Rings of Change, what I'm really going to do then is the Christmas Corner to Corner blanket, um, which is a crochet along I'm doing with Terry from the Enjoy podcast. And then I'm going to do the Big Bang Theory blanket, which I'm behind on. I was going to do it with Denise of Dear Designs, um, but I haven't actually started it yet. I just, I've been trying not to crochet with my eczema playing up, but that turned out to be a bad idea. <laughs> because that made my hands play up for not exercising them. You wouldn't think crochet is exercise, but it really does exercise your fingers and your hands and keeps those muscles working. Um, so I ended up in a lot of pain from not using it. So I do need to do more of that. Um, yeah, so I want to get on with... Um, what do you call it? The Big Bang Theory as well. But I need to order more yarn for that one. I am not quite got all the yarn I need because there's a lot of grey in it and it turns out I don't use a lot of grey because I, I tend to knit or crochet with a lot of colours. Um, so I have no grey. Or no suitable grey. Um, I have chunky that I use for some of my toys but it's the wrong kind of weight and colour and things, it's just not suitable. So I need to get some suitable grey. Um, but as I've just bought a new wheelchair, I can't get the yarn right now. You know, you have to prioritise in this month. It turns out I need a new wheelchair. It's only a manual one, but they don't come cheap nowadays. In order to get one that was suitable for my needs, um, we just had to spend out 200 quid on a manual wheelchair. It's insane. It's just so much money. 
I'm saying it's basically just a seat on wheels. <laughs> uh, and we still haven't fixed my electric wheelchair because I spent the money on a manual one. <laughs> but the manual one was needed that day, so I didn't have a choice. Um, and the electric has to wait until next month and then depending on what the service guy says about it depends on whether that gets fixed or whether we just call it quits with it and go without one for a while but we'll just have to wait and see but I just I think it's so ridiculous how much money people who need mobility aids of any kind have to pay you'd think knowing that these people have extra needs you'd try to keep the prices a little lower but nope they just say oh well these people clearly need it so they ain't gonna have a choice but pay more money that's probably really cynical and that's probably a really good reason why they charge so much but I just can't see why they can charge so much for something like that I mean it's not crash tested so it's not one that you know good for sitting in cars with and um, those ones were way much more money um, which I wasn't willing to pay I just get out of my chair and sit in a normal seat in the car um, it's like I, there's a pet set of walking uh, not walking sticks, crutches I really love to get um, because they change the angle that you're holding your arms on the crutch to um, more of an upright position um, I don't think I explained that very well, but I hope you get what I mean. Um, but to get a pair of them, you're looking over £100. Four pair of crutches. That's insane. Now, yes, they do come in funky colours, and yes, they are more complicated than a basic set of crutches because they have the ability to change angle. But still, over £100. I can't pay that for a pair of crutches. I just stick to my cheap ones that don't limit change, which um, only cost me 20 quid from Argos. Saying that, my wheelchair, the thing I just spent 200 pound on, come from Argos, and that was a, that's 200 quid, so Argos isn't necessarily always cheap. But it's just so much money. And I, I get Pip to help pay for this stuff. But that wheelchair basically cost me almost all of my pip for the month. So that means there's no money left to buy anything else I need. And it's like, so each month I have to prioritise what I'm going to get. And I'm one of the lucky ones who can cope without worrying too much about having all this. What about the people who don't have someone who can work and support them, who have lost their fights for pip? And so they don't have any money. It's like, it's ridiculous. I think I was only lucky with my PIP because I have so many conditions. They probably just looked at my medical record and like, oh well, let's just give it away. <laughs> because I was only going to end up arguing anyway. <laughs> but if I only had one or two of the conditions I have, I think I would have had a bigger fight on my hands. Because most people with my conditions do struggle to get it. Which is ridiculous. This is the problem with invisible illnesses. If you can't if the assessor can't see that physical problem, they automatically assume everything's fine. And it's like that's not the way it works. If it was, we'd be fine and we wouldn't be here in the first place trying to get some extra money to help pay for things. Oh well. <sighs> Nothing we can do about it except to just keep making it clear to the government that we're not happy by fighting each time they give a false representation of an assessment. My one made me laugh. I was mad. They're like perfect eye contact, no problem, so no anxiety. So um, I had a major headache that day, so I actually had sunglasses on the whole time. How did I have eye contact with you? <laughs> and Duncan was with me, who, as my therapist at the time said, 
he's my safety net. And when he's there, I don't feel so worried, or at least I can control my anxiety better. And so, yes, I didn't look like a nervous wreck, but most people with anxiety don't look like a nervous wreck. They hide it on the inside, and then once they're alone, that's when the panic starts. But, nope, these people think they know better. It's just stupid. There's a lot of gems stuck together, a lot of drills stuck together on this. I have to remember to squeeze the bags. I never do. I say it every time and I never do. Yep, that one ran away. I think can run away. I need these ones to turn over. I haven't worked out what the trick is to doing this yet. I still mess it up every time. Right. I think that's all the J's in there, isn't it? Looks like all the J's. Oh, me, I've missed one because we all know what I'm like. But hopefully we haven't. Let's just put these away. Right, let's just, what I'm going to do is snip this one away from the rest of the pack because they're all attached, but that one's the open one. Ooh, silly. Silly move, silly move. No sense. Absolutely no sense, have I? Uh, uh, there we go. I now have the code printed onto there. <laughs> Come off of that one there. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just going to snip it off so I can put it into a little bag. So that it doesn't come off, come out everywhere. They have little bags here. I was going to put them all into these, but I've noticed they have like a large amount of some colours, and they're just not going to fit into these bags. So I'm only going to put the ones that are open in there for now, and then I can worry about sectioning them off properly when um, I bought the containers that they're going to go in. I found the type I want to use um, on AliExpress, I had a look, um, so I'm hoping I'll be able to get them next month, but we'll have to wait and see. I mean, if I actually did some work, some crochet work to sell, I might be alright, but at the moment, I'm too busy working on stuff for myself, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't have anything new to sell, only my old stock, um, and I haven't updated things. Right, I'm just going to look up the next code. So let's see. What should we do? Oh, look, I just missed some J's down the bottom here. Oh, that was clever of me, wasn't it? And you're off camera slightly. What am I playing at today? Never mind, I'll come back to the J's. Let's, let's do K's, shall we? So we've got some K's here. So that's three seven six one. That look? Three seven six six. Oh, so close. I thought, oh, that's the right one. It's like, no, it's not. No, no stretch. Haha, <laughs> there we go. Three seven six one. these organised like the last ones that I had beside me in the end simply because I haven't sorted out into little bags and some ones are longer than the other depending on the amount I got so I haven't bothered organising them so I'll just have to search through as I go but I'm not going to be able to record for much longer because Duncan will be home and I will need to head off and get changed. I am going to just pause and redo this camera because um, it's going to time out on me otherwise. So two seconds, and we're back. Um, so hopefully it won't time out and I won't lose any footage. Okay, what did I say I was doing? I said we we're doing K's, didn't I?
Yes, this is a quite pretty colour. It's really quite light. Um, I don't know. This is the butterfly reflection in some water from the looks of the picture. Um, which is why it's a little more ripply. But it's going to look pretty. I did it again, didn't I? I forgot to leave the gap for the checker one. One day I'll get it right. Just don't hold your breath. Okay. I'm going to realign that one because it's not playing ball. It just wants to go up, doesn't it? Never mind, once the other ones are in there, hold it in place properly. I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but somebody's... I'm assuming they're cutting a hedge or something. I'm not sure. So I'm sorry if you can hear that on camera. I don't know where it's coming from. My windows are closed, so I can't make it any quieter. I live in a tiny little cul-de-sac and that cul-de-sac is surrounded by other cul-de-sacs um, so we're literally surrounded by houses here so there's going to be noise now that I'm in the conservatory I'm afraid it's just the fact of living in a small little village that's rapidly growing in houses but not actually growing outwards they're just filling up all the spots in the um, village. All the nice gardens are now turning into multiple houses. Which is really annoying. Because I really liked all the big gardens. I think the only ones that's going to have any decent sized gardens left will be the council houses up the road. Um, which is where I grew up. Um, they had reasonable sized gardens. No, they're, wrong. they're not ginormous or anything, but I'd, I'd say they're at least four times the size of the garden I got. <laughs> um, so, nowadays we're just ending up with tiny little gardens as they fit tiny little houses into smaller and smaller spaces. And all these people coming, they're not making it any easier for the children to go out and play because one of the places they're planning on building is on a field near the school and by near the school I mean like next door to the school um, which is actually the football field so what they're doing is they're playing football on the recreational ground which is our kiddies park which has got the skate park and the swings and roundabout and that sort of stuff on it um, it doesn't have a roundabout. Does anyone have a roundabout nowadays? No, it has a zip line. That's just arrived. It's nothing spectacular, but it's new and the kids are enjoying having new things. Um, but yeah, now that they're playing football on there as well, that takes up the entire field, you can't actually play on it while they're playing football because you get in their way and then they get mad. Which really annoys me because, you know, they want kids to go out and play and then they take away the only place in the entire village to play. Safely, that is. Because you obviously can't be playing on the roads. Um, uh, which is pretty much what the cul-de-sacs are. I mean, there's not even a path in our cul-de-sac. You have to walk down the road to get to my house if you're not driving. Um, it's just ridiculous, really. I know there's a housing shortage and so we need houses in this city um, but how about put them in the city instead of in the villages and to stop building retirement homes we have a very large amount of retirement homes being built in our city centre every time something big gets closed down new retirement homes get built our bus station got closed down we don't have a bus station anymore um, you have to stop at bus stops um, and then I think there's an I information kiosk in one of the shops in town um, there's no actual bus station anymore and 
everyone's like, oh, turn it into an indoor market or better parking because we've got atrocious parking in our town as well. Um, and so what they do, they built retirement homes. An office block, um, the people moved out that were using it and so it's no longer in use. And what do they do? Turn it into retirement homes. So everything that closes down turns into a retirement home or a new coffee shop or a new charity shop. Um, there's nothing here for anyone anymore. Um, for those who don't know where I live, I live in Salisbury, which happens to be um, one of the two recent places for poisonings that uh, the Russians are accused of. The other place, Amesbury, is a few miles up the road. <laughs> Um, and they got poisoned because of the Salisbury poisoning. They picked up something from Salisbury they shouldn't have. Um, so, you know, we are really kind of fighting the keep Salisbury alive method at the moment. And instead of putting stuff here to keep people coming, they're putting retirement homes and coffee shops and charity shops. And though there's nothing wrong with coffee shops and charity shops, we have an extreme amount of them. One street, Catherine Street, we just call Charity Shop Street because it's almost nothing but charity shops. It's ridiculous. I dread to think how many charity shops we have around here. I think we have one for every type of charity there is. <laughs> it's just, I mean, I like a good charity shop, don't get me wrong. But when the literally only thing left in the town centre is charity shops, coffee shops, and pups. You're like, um, well, can we have something else nice? <laughs> yeah, we do have a cinema, but it's a really old one, so I don't go to it because you can't get my wheelchair in it. Um, it's not wheelchair accessible because it's a listed building, so you know there's only a limit to what they can do to it. Um, I've stopped doing the checkerboard method again, if you've noticed. <sighs> yeah, so. Salisbury is basically dying and our council don't care. It's like our information centre is currently at the back of our guild hall. That's bang smack in the middle of town. It's literally on the market square, the centre of town. But do they want to keep it there? No. They plan on moving it to the mobility centre where you can hire mobility scooters and things when you're in town. Which might sound like a really good idea, but it's not. Because that is underneath a shopping... Um, a parking, um, uh, what's the word? A parking place. <laughs> Can't think of the word I'm trying to think of. Basically, you have Sainsbury's above it, and then Sainsbury's has some parking above next to them, and then below them is more parking. Um, it's not a shopping mall, it's literally just parking with Sainsbury's at the top. And then you have to go outside of the car park to get to the shops and the mobility place is under there in a dark, dreary, really old car park and the best bit is that place is being torn down to be revamped um, it's supposed to already start but due to different complications it's not started yet but I believe it's starting soon so it's going to be torn down and revamped to a nicer place supposedly and that's where they want to put our information centre. Not after it's been redone, but now, before it gets torn down, so that in a year's time, or maybe even months' time, the centre gets torn, the shopping, uh, the car park gets pulled down, and then there'll be no mobility place, and no information centre. Tourists need an information centre when they come here. They come here because we have a cathedral. Um, and so they come to visit the cathedral. But they're not going to be able to come and find out information if they can't find the information centre because there ain't one because it's been torn down. So where's the sense? And, you know, people quite rightly went to the councils with the complaints because we have meetings here where you can go and voice your opinion on what the council have decided. And the council literally told a woman to shut up. Her opinion wasn't valid. And they just went ahead and done it anyway. When there was petitions to stop it because there's so many people who didn't want this to happen, and they didn't care. They just went ahead and done it. Or rather, they went ahead and decided they were gonna do it. 
Um, last I checked, there was actually some kind of complication and they've had to stop. Which is good, because why would you move an information centre into outside of the edge of town and the centre of town? It would actually be the edge of town. And into a dark, dewy place, nobody's going to want to go. What they need to do is move the mobility centre so that it's more in town. But our council are just trying to ruin our shops, our town. There's going to be nothing left. The parking here is atrocious. It's actually cheaper for us to travel to Southampton and park in Southampton um, than it is for us to park in our own city. Um, and that's not just the cost of parking, it's cheaper to go including the cost of fuel, it's still cheaper. That is just downright stupid. So, yeah, this place is dying, I've pulled out way too many there. Um, and I think before long most people are going to start jumping ship, because there's nothing left here. So we have very large amount of empty shops in town. Um, if you watch some of my bits going around town on some of my vlogs, um, you would have seen a few of the empty shops. We went past them. But that was nowhere near the amount there is. There's so many more. And so lots of people have said, why not do pop-up shops? Why not open them up for markets, for, you know, sm small business owners who do craft stores and things? to have a stall in there um, so like an indoor market type thing but inside a shop that's empty because so we've got some big shops empty and um, just so you know can bring some trade into Salisbury can chance of um, small business owners making more money that sort of thing they won't do it they'd rather leave the shops empty and earn nothing than to give a really low reduced rate to small time businesses They have put out a few chalets, wooden huts, that um, usually are used for the Christmas market. They put them out on the... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. They put them out when we had the first poisoning, trying to help those whose shops were cordoned off so they could trade. And they're still out, and it's got to the point, it was £100 a week to rent one. It's now supposedly free to rent one. Um, though, no, I don't know many people who've had much luck actually getting a response from the emails to do it. But they're in such a position that nobody's going to use them anyway. We've seen one of them was in use um, when we went to town last, but they are literally where the places were cordoned off. They're just in the area that wasn't cordoned off, you know, few, few feet away. So nobody wants to go there. The tourists aren't going to go along to an area that's not quite safe, are they? Um, so it's pointless. Why they don't put them in the market square where they have the Christmas market which wouldn't um, interfere with the actual market store holders because it's a slightly different area. It's actually in front of the Guild Hall. Um, that would make much more sense. But no, that would be sim that would be sensible. And they don't do sensible. They only do silly. Um, I'd love to have one of those places, but it's just even if free, it's not cost effective because the Duncan would have to take time off work to take me there and back each day. Um, and because of the positioning, we won't get much foot traffic. And so we probably wouldn't make much, if any, money on it. And by the time you've paid your um, insurance, you know, your public li liability insurance, and you've paid your um, whatever hidden fees they have there, like rates and things, um, you probably wouldn't have any money left. So it's just, it's stupid. But, oh well, not much I can do about it, you know. The councils think they know better. And they control what gets done around here. So we just have to live with it until we can move somewhere else. See, in Plymouth, 
they used to have this indoor market where crafters and small businesses would have sometimes it was just you know your basic table but other times it was actually um a proper setup in there really they had like permanent units in there um and you just hired a table for five pounds a day or um paid a set fee for the setup and you had an indoor market every day it was great why they can't do something like that here i'd love to know Let's face it, if it's raining, you want to go to the market, you're going to want an indoor one. And it would give so many more small businesses a chance, which would bring more money into Salisbury in the first place. Because if people here are making more money, then they have more money to spend here. So it's just... Uh, it's just, I'm, I'm kind of had enough of living here, to be honest. The town has a very large amount of potential. We're pretty much just failing on everything nowadays. But, oh well. There's life in it. I know there's towns worse off than us, so I shouldn't really complain too much, but there's towns who were struggling for shops probably didn't have a poisoning to help take away a lot of the tourism. <laughs> It didn't stop it though, there were still people coming to see the cathedral even though half of the city was cordoned off because of the poisonings. They tell us now that it, it it's safe. I mean they told us that last time and it clearly wasn't because somebody else got poisoned. Or two people, one of them died. Um, even though the two that were originally poisoned survived. Um, but, you know, you can only do so much. Right, did I get all of the K's this time as I missed some of the J's last time? Shout out if you see any K's. I will hear you for the time continuum. <laughs> Hopefully I haven't missed any. I think they're all alright. Oh no, look, see, I did. I done my checkerboard and then I didn't fill them in. See, useless. Absolutely useless. I do like these colours so far though, very pretty blues. <coughs> <sighs> I need a drink, but I think when I've done these caves I'm going to call it quits anyway because I'm going to have to start getting ready soon. Um, it's not quite been two hours since he left work, it's only been about an hour, but I want to get ready and not be rushing around I think not that I'm going to be rushing around to get ready but just relax maybe watch a bit of YouTube there are a few people I need to catch up on today I haven't watched yet so just sit down relax watch some vlogs as vlogmas no nope, vlogmas vlogust is almost over so a couple of people to watch and I haven't put mine up yet. <coughs> <coughs> so sorry. Um, yeah, I'll put my vlogist up um, after the gym so I can report on that I survived the gym. <laughs> okay, we need a couple more Ks, not too many. She says, and then pulls too many out. What's the surprise there? So far this seems to be fitting much better than my last one so I'm really happy. I mean I haven't got everything straight because I'm clearly a crooked person and yet it's still fitting together reasonably nicely. Um, so it's all good. I really should learn to put these on straighter though because it makes things so much easier. But, oh well. The problem is I can't see half of it. It's not that there's anything wrong with the lighting, it's my eyes, they keep going blurry. 
those who suffer from migraines know that you get things in front of your eyes and that's what I keep getting so I've probably got a migraine coming which is not good right oh, see one more did I get them all did I catch them all I'm looking for some more friends on Poke Pokemon Go if anyone's looking for some friends I don't get out much so I don't have much but when I do I try to gift as often as possible I need to hit some Pokestops I'm hoping to hit some tonight on the way into the gym <sighs> okay, oh, no, couple more up here. Did I get them all now? Who knows? I'll know when I finish. No doubt I'll pack them away and then I'll spot three or four more Ks like I did the Js because well, we all know that's what I do. But never mind. I'm going to call that quits. So I will see you all later. We've got a little bit done today. Um... Hopefully we'll do some more tomorrow and we'll cover up my little boo-boo of printing out a number there. <laughs> um, but I'll catch you all later, so take care. Bye!